live stream of the 13th round of the 14th season of AOR and we are here on the PS4 side of things for the Italian Grand Prix. I am Nathan or PS Luton Rules as my YouTube channel is known and I'm joined in the commentary box not but not with Alan he unfortunately is missing this race instead I'm joined with the former AOR driver racing just last season it is RBOS so yeah, so how do you reckon this qualifying session is going to go? I mean, we haven't seen any drivers set in any laps yet, so I just want to know, you know, have you got any early predictions for who's going to be right up towards the front? Because you've raced with a lot of these drivers here. Yeah, indeed, that is the case. And I remember Ali K being very strong at this circuit. Uh, I believe he got pole in last season, so he will definitely be looking to do that again to improve on his championship chances. And I think this is one of the stronger tracks for him, so he definitely wants to get some points here on his opponent. Yeah, certainly Ali K, of course, the current championship leader on 149 points, and actually his championship lead was cut quite a bit um, at the last Grand Prix, the Belgian Grand Prix, which, if you haven't seen it, be sure to check it out. It is on the Apex Online Racing YouTube channel. And it was a bit of a slow burner, but certainly quite an interesting race come the end. And we've just seen, well, we are seeing the first set of qualifying times come in. We've got RC Alonso currently is the quickest with a 1 minute 20.4. Synthetic in second, Jake LFC in third. I should point out actually that the driver who took pole position in season 13 um, for the Italian Grand Prix was not Ali K. It was oh. actually Jay Fawn. Oh, it, it was season Ali 12 K. then, yeah. Quite possibly, um, Ali K had quite a miserable, miserable time last time out. It was a wet Italian Grand Prix. Uh, the qualifying session, I don't believe, was oh, yeah, but it was I a wet that one. Grand Prix. Yeah, so I Ali K. At the back in that one. <laughs> yeah, you DNF'd actually. You were 16th ah. in qualifying and then oh, DNF yeah. on the race. So didn't want to bring up bad memories there. <laughs> but um. Anyway, Aresi is currently on pole position. Um, I should mention, actually, we have only got 14 drivers on the grid. There are a number of drivers missing. Um, I know Kian will be missing. I believe he's busy with uh, university work, I believe. And also, Gamer De Best is another driver who I know um, is definitely missing from this race. But Nervo Tank has rejoined, having missed the past five races. The guy who won the first round of this season is currently third in qualifying so he may well have missed the f he may well have missed the last five races but he hasn't lost any pace third already halfway into the qualifying session Aresi in pole position and Aresi actually last season qualified in second and finished in second so Aresi it looks like you know this could be the second season in a row where he gets a decent finish at at Monza, but then again, qualifying is one thing and the race is quite another. Synthetic is currently second in the championship and second in qualifying. Nervo Tank third, RC Alonso in fourth, and well, if you saw the Belgian Grand Prix, you'll know RC Alonso just he was one of the many drivers to be caught out by tyre wear issues come the end of the previous Grand Prix. Um, yeah, it was just, it was, yeah, as I said, if you want to check out the Belgian Grand Prix, it's on the Apex Online Racing channel. As I said, very exciting end. Big C currently in fifth, Ollie D in sixth, and Ali K, who you touted to take, well, to be right up there, is currently only in tenth. So, I mean, it's, he's a way down, well, I say a way down the field, currently as it stands, there's only just over half a second separating pole position um, to 10th place actually to Ali K and then you've got Woolly, H Racing Green and Alex who are all the way off and Simo who actually hasn't set a lap time yet so, so yeah so have it, has your predictions changed Ali K away down do you still reckon he'll be right up there in fact how many well, improvements do you reckon we'll see? Well you know it it's still very close between the top 10 so every driver in the top 10 has done uh, has made a really good effort to get that time and still I think Hadi K can can put in a decent second lap and improve on his position. But I mean other than that I am kind of surprised 
to see Alex so far off the pace. Maybe he made a mistake somewhere because he is just under two seconds uh, away from pole position. So that's yeah, pretty bad I mean, for him. I mean, yeah, in I mean, seasons certain. 12 and 13, he was winning races and he was in season 12 even a championship contender. So it is quite a bad effort from him. Yeah, but I think, as you said, he must have made a mistake or, you know, in some way that isn't, you know, a representative time. As you can see, uh, well, certainly I'm seeing on my screen, all of the drivers did set their first qualifying lap on the super softs. So there's no tire difference as it stands. And in fact, we did see that um, in qualifying for the previous Grand Prix, there were drivers who at least initially were setting qualifying lap times on different tires, potentially to get a a differing strategy or you know to, to set themselves up for the race but then again you know there's only as we know if you qualify in the top 10 you have to start on the tires you qualify on and since there's only 14 drivers currently racing at this Grand Prix the chances are that well most of them statistically most of them will end up in the top 10 and we're seeing a lot of drivers come out of the pits for what will presumably be their final flying lap here in qualifying synthetic Ollie D uh, in fact it's increasing by the second the amount of drivers who are out so RBOS you're a former top tier AOR driver um, I'm, I'm you know I mean a 1 minute 20.2 for Oresi that's the lap time he's set at the moment is that do you reckon that will be beaten a 1 minute 20.2 is that really good or is you know is there still room for improvement there honestly I'm not sure, because these 2017 cars, they're quite a bit different than the 2016 cars, but I mean, it's now quite a bit later into the session and the track has definitely, the track has definitely improved, so I think we may even see that time go down, maybe Alex in particular will definitely want to catch up, but I'm on board with Synthetic right now, he just started this flying lap. Oh, wait. There we go. Big lockup into turn one from Synthetic. Currently in second place. He is just five hundredths of a second behind the RSC in the Sauber, so he will be looking possibly to beat the 1 minute 20.2 benchmark. Pushing really hard yeah. through the chicane and into the Lesnos, they're carrying quite a bit of speed. There's actually a car ahead of him though. I'm not sure if he's on a flying lap. No, he's not. He's slowing down that big C. Anyway, oh, a bit of a so nervous. There through the Oscari sliding a little bit. That might lose him a little bit of time now. We'll see. So do you reckon this could be a better time from Synthetic? You said there's a mistake, so do you reckon he will actually move up from second? Well, I'm not sure. It is a very close field, so all of these mistakes will matter, and the time was not an improvement. I'm not sure if he has fuel for another fast lap, but still the tires will have worn out by now. So he is at quite a disadvantage as Ali K, meantime, sets pole position with a 121. 120.1, I mean. Yeah, but I think that just proves that you know your stuff. I know it looked like for a while Ali K wasn't going to be towards the top, and Ali K is the current championship leader, so I don't think anyone's doubting his pace. But yeah, currently on top in qualifying, just like you predicted, but there's still. 43 seconds left to go, RC Alonso improved up to second place. There's yellow flag in sector 2, uh, so I must have spun out there. Oh no, that just carries going a little bit slowly. Yeah, He's preparing yeah, for his own time left. Anyway. Actually, we've got, we've got Simo. Oh no, Simo actually going incredibly slowly round Parabolico. I thought he was going to set a lap time. Well, I think he will set a lap time, but I'm not sure how he has, representative he it's going to be. He didn't set a lap time so far, so he definitely wants to set one. And he, well, he has just set yeah, one. Yeah, he just, has, just set one, but it's still not as competitive as he wants. 
I'm on board with the Nerva tank right now. When I raced, he was quite a good driver, possibly the best driver on the grid, so he'll probably be want to be up there as well. But I think he was away now for a bit of time, so he might not be as competitive, he might be a little bit rough since he hasn't raced for a while. Jake LFC sideways oh. on the track. Well, Nervo <laughs> just drove straight through Jake there on the run to Parabolica. Well, Jake has just been disqualified. I mean, he was sideways on the track. I think it said he was actually disqualified for going the wrong way. Yeah, which means that everyone me behind well. him has gained a position. Yeah, there's Nervo tank in the third place. Uh, Ali K now down to fourth. He's not setting another lap. RSC improved as well. To second and RC Alonso with a 120.0. So far pole position for him. And what's what Carrix does? He's only sixth. I think that's the grid. Yeah, everyone's going. Well, slowly. I think Alex is actually coming around the final corner, but no, he's oh, going, no, he's I don't think slowly. he's on a hot lap. He's going slow, then... so he's not on a time yeah. lap. That's the grid. Yeah, that. Yes, that so is RC everyone. So Alonso, with a brilliant lap of 120.0, the only driver to break into the 120.0, and also really close qualifying as well, with just zero, just two tenths separating the top ten. Yeah, that Synthet is, synthetic that is with that mistake in the end ended up costing him quite a lot of places there. And also he's Actually, starting... that is a very good point. Yeah, and also he's starting in 10th, which means he is on worn out tires a little bit. Which might matter in the race. And also he doesn't get the free choice like the, for example, Hate Racing Green or Wally get. That's a very valid point you bring up, actually, with all the drivers being so close. I mean, we, we, we normally see the fields be very close, but we've never seen the drivers, the top ten, be separated by such a small margin. Two tenths separating the top ten. And as you pointed out, Synthetic, you were on board during his lap, during his second lap, yeah. and you said made a couple of mistakes, and that's proved to be even more substantial than I could possibly have expected, but RC Alonso will be starting on pole position for the Italian Grand Prix, Aressi in second, Nervo Tank third, Ali K in fourth, the current championship leader in fourth, Alex fifth, Carex sixth, now you got Clarky, Big C, Oli D, Synthetic, H Racing Green, Woolly, Simo, and then JKLFC who will be starting at the back because he got disqualified, so that's docked him a lot of positions. I don't know what lap time he actually set, but certainly... It says wrong way, that's why he got disqualified. Yeah. Maybe, and his best lap time... will, maybe he went for a spin and tried to rejoin the track. I think that is potentially what happened. I know when I started spectating him after that point, he was sideways on the straight just after yeah, the Ascari chicane. Yeah, so... tank and he... I saw Jake, I mean Nerva tank pass through Jake on my screen. <laughs> Yeah, well, he was disqualified yeah. by that point anyway. Yeah. So it looks like it's going to be an all-dry race, unlike the Season 13 Italian Grand Prix where it was wet for the entirety, actually. There was that race, it was a question of whether to go into the wet tyres, whereas here, certainly won't be the case. It, it, I, mean, I don't even think it's going to rain, and seriously, if it does, I don't think it's going to be full wet by the time the chequered flag comes out. So while we're waiting for it to load, I'll just ask for a quick prediction race win or who do you reckon is going to excel here? Well, I mean, Alonso obviously has quite a big advantage starting from pole position, but I think actually because of the slipstream those that are starting in third or fourth might have a better race. They might have a better chance of overtaking the front two into turn one. And I know Nervotank He's very good with overtakes, so 
We might see a bit more from him in the race. Hopefully so. Nervo Tank won the first race in this season and, as you said, proven good driver. I don't think he's going to be going down without a fight. But the lights are on for the 13th round in the Season 14 Italian Grand Prix on the PS4 AOR League. And it is underway. I see Alonso not particularly clean start, but he is still leading for the Look time the being. As two Manny Ferraris he's side by side. Second, yeah. And actually, Aressi's going to be able to hold it in second, just ahead of his teammate, Ali K. But actually, Ali K, not the best run of the, of the first chicane. And I think Kerex is going to go down his inside, round the curve of Grande. So Kerex has moved up to third place. That is a very good start for him, unless Ali K is going to oh, oh, lock up the front oh. wheels. But Kerex hopping over the curb and actually... Not a brilliant exit for Kerek, so Ali K heading into the first Lesmo will retake third place. And this amazing scrapping for third, fourth place means that, in fact, there's already quite a big gap between the top two and then all those behind us. Ali K, Kerex, Novo Tank in fifth, Alex in sixth, and then Oli D in seventh, but heading up to oh, all actually Novo Tank. I thought he was going to make a move there, but actually didn't come the end. Around the Ascari Chicane. And a 27 lap Grand Prix, but we've almost done a lap already. I saw Red Bull get pushed yeah. out there, but I don't think any harm done. And heading down towards the final corner, Novo Tank still not able to make a move. And Monza, a, a very high average well. speed circuit. That is one lap done of this Grand Prix already, with RC Alonso leading, Aressi in second. And then Alex is putting K. a lot of pressure on Ali K and I saw him going defensive into Ascari and now he's going defensive again into turn one. And Harry also held it really beautifully around the outside there. That is a pretty good move, but Ali now has the inside line into Curva Grande and he is able to defend. He's slightly defensive there, but Carrick's still on the inside. We'll get the better exit from here, but Ali K with the inside line. I think he keeps third here. Yeah, he does. But I see Nervo Tank as well trying to get into the action. This is not an overtaking spot, Lesnar too, but he pushes Karik wide, and now he has quite a good run on on this straight into a Skari, but obviously Karik's with inside line. We'll see what happens here. Nervo Tank just outbreaks him around the outside, and that's pretty good. Got a little bit off track though, I've noticed that. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a warning for that. We'll see. But Quite Ali came now, uh, got himself a bit of breathing space. But speaking of breathing space, the gap to the leaders is 4.5 seconds already. As Arasi sets the fastest lap of the race there. And Carrie yes. getting back past Nervo time. So now these two battling is allowing Ali K to pull ahead as well. Yeah, that has been the story of this Grand Prix so far. It's just been drivers that have been battling very hard, as we saw Ali K. Well, it was a three-way battle for third place between Ali K, Carex, and Nervo Tank, which Ali yeah. K has now won. But actually, Carex has got a bit of a gap over Nervo yeah. Tank. Certainly, I don't think if it moves going to be If you can push on this lap, maybe, and try and pull pull out a bit of a gap to Nervo Tank, but I know that is easier said than done because Nervo Tank <laughs> is a seriously good driver. Well, and, and you would know, this, this is the benefit of having a former AOR driver here commentating, is you you actually know you've raced against a lot of these people, so you can, you can you know, size up just how good they are. I mean, I know that was a different game back in those seasons, but, you know, still. You, so you, you seem to be rating Nervo Tank very highly, um, but currently in fifth, a little way behind Carex. But this is Monza, and the one thing about Monza is it is not short on overtaking opportunities. And in fact, Carex has caught up to the back of Ali K. So of course, all these drivers have DRS. This is the problem for Ali K. Is yes, he did open a bit of a gap being in clean air, but everyone behind him has got DRS on him. So. Will there be enough of an overspeed Karek, to towards the first? Karek looks quite far back, I don't think he goes for the move here, yeah. He slots back into it, getting really close actually, under braking. Possibly on the next lap, so watch out for that. He seems pretty close now. Uh, I know the Stadi K made a mistake on the previous lap, 
in this very chicane we're about to come into, locking up a wheel and running a little bit wide, allowing Carrix to catch up. Doesn't do it this time though, but Carrix now right behind Daddy Kane is able to just follow him and wait for his opportunity. There are a lot of long straights at Monza, so he definitely will get one. Ooh, bit Probably. of a slide from Nervo Tank behind. I didn't see that. Well, it wasn't massive, but there was definitely opposite lock going on there. So he's lost a bit of ground to Carex um, and Ali came. In fact, this is yeah, he has this quite, is he has quite an aggressive driving style and does like to burn through his tires very quickly, but. He's still fast enough that it compensates for that. And Karak's actually going really slowly there. I don't know what's going on as never Tank has <laughs> to go for the move. <laughs> well, I, I was on board of Karak's. He put his hand up in the air. Nervo Tank says the fastest lap. So Nervo Tank, I think, made bit of contact with Karak's. But actually, Ali K well, looks like he might lose two one. positions. Well, Karak's locking up both front wheels. And Nervo in fact, Tank around Ali the outside. <laughs> But Ali K, will he get the better run out of the corner? No! And Ali K is down to fifth. Down to fifth, but I'm, that will probably be temporary. I mean, he's already sizing up Nervo Tank. Not quite the case there, but um, no, I mean, yeah, he's down to fifth, but I'm sure that's temporary. And in fact, actually, it's not just Carex, Nervo Tank, and Ali K. I know we're just mentioning them, but Clarkie and Ollie D are also in this train, could easily get involved. Alex isn't too far behind, only one and a half seconds behind, and then there was a bit of a gap actually um, from H Racing Green, who is in ninth place. Um, he's kind of got his own separate train, H Racing Green, Synthetic, Big C, Woolly, Simo, who is 13th, but, but he has got the medium tyres on, and Jake LFC, I don't know what's happened to him. Um, I presume he is coming to the pits. Um, yeah, he, he's on the medium, so... I'm not sure if he started on those. Yes, or... he did pit. He has pitted. Actually, hang on. We're looking yeah, up towards the front, RC Alonso might be overtaken by a Ressi here, heading towards the no. first chicane contact. What, what is contact? I yeah, a Ressi hit the side sure, of RC Alonso. I was fairly sure so a Ressi close. was backing out of that one, but seemingly not. RC Alonso weaving from side to side going around the Curva Grande, so those two fired up. This is, well, we didn't see a great deal of action between them, but now it's it's heated up a lot. So, yeah, it's yeah, no one move made by Ressi. Yeah, Carrick's as well. So now, those, yes. with, with that contact, they're allowing Nervotank, who is now in clean air. He can push, he is fast, we know that, and he, he, they now allowed they now gave Nervo Tank the opportunity to catch up to them. Now Nervo Tank just needs to pull away from this train and actually start setting some fast laps because battling is going to slow him down and Carix does not look to be dropping off. In fact, Ali no, looks to quite be dropping the opposite. off. No, it's the problem is obviously, obviously Novo Tank, he knows what he has to do. He just has to stay in third, keep it in clean air, and then hope that Aressi oh, and Arcee Alonso tank. Well, speaking of which, Arcee Alonso has come into the pits. Now, this Possibly is right undercut. at the start of the pits window. So he's going to take off the super softs and will fit on the soft tyres. Pretty conventional one stop strategy here for the Italian he Grand Prix. But he's actually. Yeah. Maybe exactly. he got some Absolutely. damage from the incident with the Ressi, so we might see that in the stewards actually, after the race. Quite possibly, but also it does mean that maybe a Ressi himself got damage, and if that's the case and he has a slower pit stop due to a front wing change, it might mean that we don't see RC Alonso or a Ressi in the race lead. It could end up being, well, Carex is currently in second having passed Nervo Tank, so actually if both of those two have got damage, oh, yellow, yellow flags, flags out. Oh, that's that's why A Racing Green and Big C and there's Ooh, quite a lot yes. of carnage as Wooly hits right into the side pod of Big C and <laughs> loses his front wing. I think Big C's got damage as well. 
Yeah, I thought I put the yellow flag briefly. I thought that was due to Synthetic, who I saw was off the track. But no, it was definitely due to that incident between Big C and Woolly. Now, Kerex has caught yeah, up Woolly slightly left to Aressi. Alonso yes, actually to go for the soft tire on his pit stop. Uh, Jake chose the mediums, so a bit of a split strategy there. Well, Alex is in the pits right now, and he is fitting on the soft tires. So most people who are pitting seem to be fitting on the soft tires. Also, the battle for second looks to have calmed down a little as Nerva Tank slotting in behind Carex, possibly. Hoping for a bit of a push later in the race. Well, from where from where I'm sitting, it well actually well okay maybe not, but it it does seem wise to just for Novo Tank to just let Carex put in the fast laps because Carex has been closing up ever so slightly on Aresi. Now if Aresi has got front wing damage, slower pit stop, Carex could easily find himself in the race lead, depending on RC Alonso. RC Alonso, speaker, which isn't actually in any traffic. But, yeah, and we should mention, actually, Ali K is down in fifth place. He's been overtaken by Clarkey. Yeah, and he looks so to be under something the happened there. as well. Maybe he is just going for a more conservative tyre setup and maybe, maybe trying to push out his stint on the on the soft tires, everyone pits except for <laughs> Nervo Tank and Ali K. <laughs> well, I'm looking at Aressi, right. he's fitting on the soft tires. That seems to be the favourite strategy, and in he fact, was, that, he was I think he was slightly by, held up. Yeah, by Clarky coming into the pits, I think, but still, Redrin's in the lead. Well, I see a lot of in the net lead. I'm on board with him, he's coming down the start finish straight right now, so he's gunning it. 200 miles an hour, there no, is RC Alonso. It. He's not gonna make it. No. But the interesting he's, thing he's... is, now Carrix is right behind Aresi because Aresi got held up in the pits. So the lead he built up over the first nine laps has all disappeared. Yeah, has all disappeared, and Aresi currently 22.8 seconds behind Nervo Tank, who hasn't pitted yet. Now, I don't know what the time, the general time spent in the pit lane is, but it is quite possible that Aresi might not end up in the race lead, although Aresi is actually catching up on Nervo Tank, so it looks like you want to get off those super softs. They're just worn, you know, beyond worth at this point, but Nervo Tank... He's yep, he is coming in into the pits this lap, and so is Ali K. But there will have we'll one just... lap pressure soft tires, so maybe it will be something to watch out for later in the race. Certainly so, but Novo Tank in the pits now, and well, a couple of people have passed the pits, but they're outside contenders. Aresi coming down the start finish straight now, currently in fifth place. But he is going to retake the effective race lead. Carex is in a net second place. When it's but really Nervo close Tank between might Nervo be Tank and net third. Alonso. As he, Nervo is on full tires here and couldn't hold it. They're down the inside and Alonso takes the place. Even Clarky looking to take the place. Nervo Tank still on pretty cold tires and Clarky might have an opportunity here into this chicane. Under breaking, but just this slot behind him doesn't want to get involved and get some wing damage. Probably a wise decision. So, just while we've got a bit of brief um, restoration to to a normal grid order, I know H Racing Green is in first and Simo second, but those two will be coming into the pits just whenever whenever their strategies play out. But currently, Aresi is in. In third place, an effective race lead. Carex is in a net second, but is all over the back of Aresi. So now, the battle for the race lead is no longer between RC Alonso and Aresi. It's between Aresi and Carex. And yeah. Carex only joined... He only started racing in this league just a few rounds ago. So he is still, this season, fairly new. He hasn't done all the races, unlike Aresi. 
and looks to be having a look to the inside here with the massive toe from the DRS around the outside and he actually gets it done. <laughs> yeah. You said, you said that with surprise, like you like he didn't expect that to happen. Well yeah, around the outside of turn one, I mean that's pretty good. Well he's expecting well, a bit I... of a more aggressive defense from Aresti, but probably doesn't want to get involved in trouble either after the incident with <laughs> uh, see Alonso earlier. But yeah, yeah I think Carrick think... uh, showing quite a bit of speed. He's actually fact, even he's... pulling away from Oresti. That's exactly what I was going to say. It was a half a second gap heading up towards the Ascari chicane. So, so all right, okay, a mid-race prediction. I know this is a bit of a dangerous thing to do, um, but Kerex, Kerex is looking strong. At, in fact, yeah, he's got half a second temporarily, a six-tenth of a second lead. So do you reckon... Do you reckon it's going to be between these two, Kerex and Aresi, or do you reckon Nervo Tank, RC Alonso, those guys who are just a couple of seconds behind, do you reckon they'll be able to come back and, you know, and actually still have a chance to win this race? Well, I think, looking at it right now, Kerex is the fastest driver right now. So, he is expected to pull away from Aresi, although he made a bit of a mistake there. And Synthetic, Nervo oh, Tank. Nervo Tank's dropping back. Well, he just that. pushed. He was just pushed into the gravel by RC Alonso. No real contact, but just no space was left for Nervo Tank. So that was what happened very there. Very aggressive was a... defense then. I know Nervo Tank is a very aggressive attacker, but possibly too aggressive on that occasion. Quite Although possibly, I, have no, but... I have no doubt that he <laughs> will. He will be able to get back past him if he is fast enough. I'll tell you what, the one thing I don't doubt is that we're going to see more overtakes. Because this has been, I know in this game it's got a bit of a reputation. Um, Nervo Tank with a three second time penalty. Yeah, he just got Ascari there as I was looking at him. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a pretty obvious penalty. But that does remind me, Carex has himself got a three second time penalty. So as it stands, if the race finished now, he would finish in in second place. So Rassi would, well, take the effective race win once you take out H Racing Green and Simo. So Carex has got to win by three seconds. And, uh, you know, in a lot of circuits, that's tricky. But especially one where there's two DRS rates and, it, and it's just a constant slipstream affair, that's going to be difficult to do. But that's, um, yeah, as I was saying, this game, F1 2017, it's got a bit of a reputation for producing boring races, not many overtakes. This race has been the exact opposite. There's been overtakes every lap, I think, pretty much, with Carex currently in third, Aresi fourth, RC Alonso fifth, Clarkie in sixth, with Novo Tank seventh, Ali K all the way down in eighth. And Ali K, well, for a while it looked like Ali K was going to, well, he was in third place. And now down in eight. Yeah, he looks to be effective net six. He looks to be struggling quite a bit, which is not what I expected from Ali K at all. Yeah, I, I'm sur I'm really surprised at this. Especially <laughs> he has he has one lap fresher tires as well. I mean, he should be at least maintaining the gap to never think. But he looks to be dropping back into the clutches of Alex and Oli D who are both pretty good drivers as well I mean everyone here is good they're well <laughs> they're in yeah. the best tier on PS4 after all yeah but, but you mentioned yeah, Carex's the... penalty uh, the qualifying yeah. was close so we know the drivers are pretty close I'm not sure if he is going to pull away those three seconds Aresti looks to be keeping up just fine, and I do believe Aresti isn't going to get a penalty, at least from my experience. Well, I'm, I'm currently looking at the race director screen, I'll just point out the drivers who have penalties. So Woolley's got a 3 second time penalty, so has Novotank, so has Carex. Um, Novotank, it says, 
on lap nine got a stop go penalty for speeding in the pit lane. That's what it says for Nerva Tank. Hmm. Yeah, but, it, it has happened before. I can say that. But that was on lap nine, and don't you normally have to serve stop goes within three laps? So um, shouldn't he, if he the, had a stop go penalty. On this game, it gets added to your race time in the end, I think. Oh, so he doesn't have to actually come in the pits then? Yeah, but if he does come into the pits, he will wait the extra five seconds. Okay. Okay. Right, well, that's good to know. Um, yeah, so other drivers have penalties, because we've seen quite a few penalties already, even though we're only about halfway into the race. Um, yeah, Novo Tank has got... Oh no, sorry, I've already said about that. Um, Ollie yeah. D himself has got a three second time penalty, and so has Jake LFC. Yeah, this track, uh, it requires quite a lot of precision with the chicanes, and just cut one of them a bit too much and you will get the warning, and obviously three warnings is a time penalty. It is a very easy thing to do. Wow, I, I, I'll be honest, I, I wasn't expecting that from, from a former... <laughs> Top tier AOR driver. He's supposed to be the cleanest, most you know, best drivers. It's well, yeah, but sometimes I guess you, that is sometimes it's just push a little bit too hard, and you miss like, the I apex by a couple <laughs> of centimeters, and you can get a warning. Well, I guess I guess that is one of the main tips, isn't it? Well, I guess that is kind of the real way to get you know to, to straight line the corner as much as possible without actually cutting it i guess that is kind of basically the real aim isn't it you always want to keep uh you always want to keep at least two wheels on the track that's the best well, way yes. to that's the best way to avoid getting penalties but you know not every lap is going to be perfect like that sometimes you will just run off and when you do run off the game will give you a warning because you're already going <laughs> quite a bit faster than what the game is expecting you to be. Because, I mean, th these guys are the best drivers on PS4. Well, the best drivers, I mean, currently, Carex, who's, who's done brilliantly well actually defending his effective race lead, is coming up behind, well, not traffic, because this is a genuine overtake. There's no blue flags here, because Simo is in... A genuine yeah, second place. I mean, if, I was here, here, if I was Simon here, I wouldn't battle him too hard because you're not really going to gain anything from it. Because you're just, you'll just drop 20 seconds behind after you <laughs> do make your pit stop. So, I mean, there's no point. Well, there's there's no point, but even despite that, this this is going to harm Carex a lot. If, well, you can visibly see that Carex, the gap he had over, over Aresi is less than what it was as Hate Racing Green yeah, comes into the, the pits. Time, he, Carex is just passing him now on the start finish straight. If Aresi doesn't manage to get past soon, he will have to wait quite a bit long, quite a long time before the next passing opportunity, which might give Carex the gap that he had again. Yeah, and I think that is exactly what is going to happen. Already, Carex has opened up a... Yeah, Ressi well, needs it's... to get past here, otherwise he gets stuck in the Lesmos, which is not fun, and it looks to be exactly what's happening, as he said. <laughs> well, Carex has got nearly a one-second gap, and at this circuit, it's going to be crucial, because once you're more than a second behind, you're outside of DRS range, and this circuit, it is... A, it's effectively an oval with some chicanes. If you don't have DRS, it does become sort of significantly more difficult to actually keep up with the, um, the driver ahead, which I think is what we have seen with Ali K, who is struggling to keep up with the likes of Nervo Tank and Clarkie because, well, he's got to contend with drivers behind him as well as not have the benefit of DRS. But the Ressi, I think he's... Well, should, if he doesn't pass into, para, into Parabolica, he's going to spend an entire lap stuck up behind Simo. So is this, would you say this is a case of Simo defending overly aggressively, or is this just a no, Ressi I think, I think not Aresi having is speed? Just, I think Ares is just really passive. He should be quite a bit more aggressive because this might be the race winning moment here for Carex. Because now he has clean air. He Aresi no longer is in DRS range. So 
Carrick can just put in a couple of fast laps now and start to pull away. Well, I, as we've already said, I believe Carex is still holding the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. He certainly no, did I, set it. I think it. it's synthetic, actually. He said the 122.8. Oh. oh, well, but still. Um, Carex, I mean, you've, you've said it yourself that Carex does appear to be one of, if not the fastest driver out there currently. I mean, that explains why he's leading the Grand Prix and is nearly two seconds ahead of a Rassi. Simo, maybe, I mean, well, I mean, it wasn't really Simo's fault. He was just driving around doing his own race, but Aresi being stuck behind Simo has cost him significantly. He's now, you know, Aresi is now 1.8 seconds behind oh, Carex. there's another Nervo penalty tank. for Nervo thing. I just followed yeah. him. Uh, must have cut a scurry again. <laughs> yeah, I, I do worry for Nervo tank because he was in a good position and in theory, on the face of it, he still is in sixth place, but with all the penalties he's accrued, he could be dropping way down the order. He might end up only scoring one or two points this Grand Prix. It's quite likely at the moment. With, so I think he's got two three-second penalties plus a stop-go penalty. So that's that's going to add up to a lot. And you know we're only lap 19, so potentially he could get another one. Well, yeah, hey, tracing uh, green. Another the fastest thing. Lap. His. He usually wants to be in the race lead at this stage because at least that's what he's done in seasons when I've raced against him to the point where any penalties he gets don't matter because the gap is already big enough but right now he seems to be struggling he lost touch with uh, Alonso and Clark ahead of him and he has that is 11 seconds of penalties hanging over him so not in a great yeah. position at all, as Clark actually gets a penalty. Oh, and he runs yeah, he gets very wide. Must have run he wide behind the, Simo. on the right hand of the Scari. That usually that gives a penalty. And Big C as well gets a penalty uh, down in 11th. He is really struggling as well, down three places from his grid position. And behind Synthetic as well. Currently not in the points, and that certainly isn't going to help him at all. And Harry, obviously, behind is quite a bit faster on the super soft tire. Yeah, well, I mean, as we saw, we just set the fastest lap of the race not that long ago. But yeah. Simo, I think, is going to cause more disruption in the battle for third, fourth, fifth place because Simo currently in third, but there's Arcee, Alonso, Clarky. Nervo Tank is now caught up to those two, and well, potentially even Ali K could catch up. This could be the opportunity Ali K needs to catch back up to RC Alonso, Clarky, Nervo Tank. Because well, going around the Lesmos, I mean, obviously the Lesmos not really an overtaking place, but heading up towards the Scarry Chicane, and still none of these guys have got past Simo. But I think around the outside, heading into the Scarry Chicane, yeah, RC there's... Alonso. Oh. Isn't very, going to do it. That's actually very aggressive defending from Simo. I would you ex would you expect that? Would you expect him to be no that actually aggressive? I, I don't honestly. I don't know what he. Oh, th there's a bit of contact on my screen there with Nervo Tank and Alonso. But as I was saying, I have no idea what Simo is doing right now. He hasn't <laughs> made a pit stop. He has to make a pit stop because it's mandatory. And. He's just holding up these guys for basically no reason at all. Like when he rejoins, yeah. he will rejoin in in like twelfth place. Second to last, I think. Yeah. yeah. And he will have. He will be on. Yeah, he will be on super soft tires, but he will only be on them for six <laughs> laps, while the other drivers have been on those tires for eight or nine laps. So I don't think this is a very good strategy he's on right now. <laughs> no, no, and Simo in, in races of past, Simo has pulled off some brilliant strategies. Monaco springs to mind. Simo, his 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 strategy at Monaco was brilliant. It was masterful actually. Ali K didn't expect he thought Simo was, you know, just out of the running and then Simo ended up winning that race. But um 
I'll be honest, looking at the action now, it does kind of make me wish that drivers don't have to come into the pits because Simo is livening up this monstrous battle for third place. Four cars, all separated by absolutely oh, that, that's nothing a, that's at all. That's a very good overthink that Alonso is about to pull off. Around the outside well, he has of pulled off. just a lot more grip on the, soup, on the soft tires and... Simo trying to fight back I think Simo might re-overtake. Oh, and look at Nervet on, <laughs> on the <laughs> outside, on the grass. That's... Oh, I think it's contact between Simo and Arcee Alonso. Nervet's been a there's, full wide, there's quite a, a lot of car contact. crash. <laughs> and Ali K I, has I gained places. I said that Simo <laughs> could open up the opportunity <laughs> Ali K needed to gain places. I didn't expect it to really happen, and I, I didn't expect it to happen in that fashion. Ali K is in fifth, Oli D is in fourth, Alex, <laughs> Alex is in third. Last time I remember, Alex was in like eighth place. I wow. have actually no idea what just happened. <laughs> Alright then. I mean... <laughs> We, yeah, we've seen some incidents, some crashes, some coming togethers this season so far, but I, I think that takes the cake. Certainly, I think that's got the most cars involved in one crash. Four cars all caught up, and I hate to say, but that was reminiscent of the incident that RC Alonso got involved in earlier on. RC Alonso was around yeah, the outside and then just got attacked were, by the cars behind. This time there were quite a few more cars involved, and the nervous well, left the session. Well, Possibly I think so. Yeah, right. Well, I, it, it, to me, that's that screams of a rage quit. He was in worst case scenario, what fifth place? Yeah, well, he and wasn't, he was down he wasn't in the going to score so. points anyway with his penalties. That's also a very good point, actually. He did have penalties, so there was really very little hope for him. So, well, well my attention is now turned to the new people battling for third place. It is currently Alex in third place. Oli D though, only two tenths of a second behind. Ali K isn't too far behind. Clarky is now in sixth. So this is, wow, okay, so now we've got some completely new drivers to suss out and watch. But Alex in third, Oli D fourth. This is, this is gonna be incredibly close, but Oli D looking very how, racy. How did these guys end up battling for the podium? <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't, really don't. Um, well, those drivers, of those drivers who did get caught up, RC Alonso is in seventh, so he is actually leading those cars that was caught that were caught up in that incident. I Simo think Clarkie actually was caught up as well, so he would um, be the leading one. Actually, yeah, I believe you are right there, actually, yeah. Yeah. Clarky Alonso, never thank you, Simo. I think that's the four. Yeah, yeah, I've had... Yeah, you are right there, definitely. So Clarky hasn't actually... In, in theory, I don't think Clarky's actually lost that many positions then. I suppose not really. So, yeah. It's very strange, that incident. But Clarky, not able to pass Ali K. Alex still in third. Oli D still in fourth, but still close. Um, the battle for the leads, well, there isn't really much of a battle, so to speak. Kerex is still just about outside of DRS range. He's got, oh, it's now a pr just over one second gap. Kerex has over yeah, arrest. Ar so. Arrest he closed up. It was 1.5 when they were held up by Sima. So Kerex hasn't done enough to pull away for his penalty. To not matter, but Arrest is doing a really good job. He only needed to keep the gap lower than three seconds, he is closing the gap as well, but I don't think he's gonna go for it. He n probably knows he is the current race leader. Well, let's hope so, but I'll tell you what, if he doesn't know, or if he can't guarantee it, it would be interesting to see a potential last lap lunge. Well, and um, Oli D has done a brutal of a lap. last lap lunge. Yeah, yes. Although, it's not um, although Alex lap, is still there. Still a pretty good lunge. I'm not sure how... I'm not sure if he needed this because he just gave Alex the opportunity to pass him back on the start-finish straight, which he just did. And Alex retains third place. 
I'm, I'm, I'm still getting over the shock that it's actually Alex in third place. This is no disrespect to Alex. It's just, you know, what, five laps ago, Alex was towards the bottom end of the points, and now it looks like he might end up getting a podium position. This is oh, yeah, completely uh, out of nowhere. I think I'm seeing a bit of rain there. Rain? Yeah, yeah, there's definitely rain. There is. Yeah, you are right, actually. There is rain. I think it is too maybe, light and too late is, to make an impact. Maybe that's what Sima was hoping for. To maybe... Oops. If the rain came earlier, maybe he would have put it straight <laughs> oh. for us. Yet Simo still hasn't pitted. Yeah. And he's going to have to pit within the next lap, isn't he? Because he has to pit. Well, he yeah. has to, or else he'll be disqualified. Yeah. JKLFC has just fitted on the intermediate tyres down in 13th place. Well, he has nothing to lose, so let's see where that True. gets him. I, I do think the track is still not wet enough. There doesn't seem to be any spray at all. Well, there is a little no. bit, but it's not enough, I, I'd say. No, I, I still maintain, even if the rain fell down as hard, as hard as it possibly could, you wouldn't want to fit on the intermediates. It is just too late. But, you know, we, we saw at Belgium last time out, the previous Grand Prix. There, the rain, it just, the track conditions changed almost instantaneously. But I don't think that's going to be the case here. Although, Carex has now opened up a bit of a gap on Aresi, a bit more of a gap, I should say. Um, and I wonder if DRS will be restricted soon because that would be a bit of a shame because that would well it would quell the, the chance for there to be any last lap overtake but Oli well, D still incredibly yeah. close I know to Alex, Alex I know Alex is very bad in the wet <laughs> weather so oh, I believe should have said that <laughs> commentators curse potentially let's hope not the RS is still enabled I can see in Oli's rear wing as he so, is putting a lot of pressure on Alex. And if you were if you were Ollie D right now, would you just go for a last lap lunge? Would you you know, even if it looks like it's slightly too big of a gap, would you go for it? Since it is well, the last lap actually, I don't think he needs to do a lunge because Alex I think just got just got his tires a bit too cold, a bit too wet, deep into parabolica. Yeah, probably and a of course Ollie D's gonna have DRS. Say, I did say he's not the best driver in the way. <laughs> You shouldn't have said that. You cursed him. <laughs> Ollie D, we're on the final lap of the Grand Prix. Ollie D's locked up. That, it is definitely actually getting close to intermediate conditions. The Ollie that D. Is in the wet is Addy K as he looks to have gained the place on Clarky. I think he was already ahead. Hang on, Carex is only one tenth of a second ahead of Aresi. So I know there's still penalties involved anyway, so I believe Aresi would have won. Yeah, anyway, due to penalties, mix. but in these sorts of conditions, surely it is incredibly easy to just lock up, make a mistake. Well, we've already seen Alex and Oli D lock up in the past lap. Well, I haven't raced Carex, so I don't know anything about <laughs> his ability in the wet. Well, I, 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 well, well, his ability, I mean, it well, looks his like ability his ability in the was pretty pretty good but I mean he did pick up that penalty and he hasn't done enough to make it not count and it looks like Aresi will win the race yep Aresi ended up winning by 2.3 seconds once you factor in Carex's penalty Oli D is going to take third place barring any penalties but I don't yeah, believe look, there look are any Alex dropped. actually there is Oli D did oh. have a penalty so Alex did finish in third come the end. Ali K in fifth, just behind Oli D. Synthetic in sixth. Arcee Alonso seventh. Clarky in eighth. I believe he might have potentially lost some positions due yeah, to Clarkie penalties. Yeah, Clarky was sixth. Clarky was sixth. He definitely lost positions. And it was very yeah. close there between sixth and eighth. Clarky needed thought, just yeah. about eight tenths in order to keep his sixth place, but it didn't happen and big C up to ninth. Matt, there's been a post-race crash. <laughs> I'm looking on board from H Racing Green. Yeah, so there's been a post-race crash. So, this race, it's been, I wouldn't say full of incidents, but there's been a lot of close racing. There's been a couple of incidents, both of them involving RC Alonso. I'm just saying that, just pointing it out. 
But, um, yeah, and even after the race, we've seen the collision. Simo in 11th, just about missed out on points, but he is on the intermediate tyres, yeah. so I he, think that was his strategy. He had to make the pit stop. He would have hoped the rain would have come earlier than it did. Then he was looking in a very good position, but as it is, it's only 11th place for him. So... We're going to see the podium ceremony right now, and, well, when it loads, it should be Aresi on the top step of the podium. The man who, in season 13, finished second, but this season, season 14, Aresi has gone one place better, winning the Italian Grand Prix in the season 14 of the top tier, the F1 tier of AOR. And there you go, so you've got Aresi in first, second place is Carex, and third place is Alex. So, actually a podium you would sort of see in real life. You've got one Ferrari driver and two Mercedes drivers. So, there you go, Alex, still a shock how he finished in, in third place. But that was due to, of course, that four-car collision that we saw um, towards the end of the race. So, the race order, it's Aresi, Carex, Alex, Oli D in fourth place, Ali K in fifth. They've got Synthetic, uh, Carlos Sainz, as it says, is in seventh. Clarky, Big C, H Racing Green, who took the final points position. Simo, strange strategy, didn't work, down in 11th place, but qualified in 13th, so actually an improvement there. Then it's Max Verstappen, Jake LFC, and Roman Grosjean. Roman Grosjean, of course, Novo Tank, and Novo Tank. Close to scoring points, should have done, but then of course that, that I, well, I, I'm notorious, I think, four car collision did it for him. So, what, okay, so we always do this at the end of, at the end of every race. What would you rate the race out of 10? Well, I mean, it was a pretty interesting race. It had incidents, it had overtakes, it had a pretty good lead battle as well. And it had rain in the end. I think it spiced things up. So... I think it's a pretty good eight. I, yeah, I mean, I, I think you said. I think you summed it up. You said it's got, you know, it had overtakes. It had everything. This race, um, and as I said that during the race commentary, F1 2017, it's got a bit of a reputation for producing boring procession races, no overtakes. But this race, I think, I mean, okay, sure, it was around Monza, the king of straight line circuits, but there was overtakes every lap and you know a very decent thoroughly enjoyable race and i'm not even lying when i say that unlike previous times now this race was genuinely completely enjoyable yeah a nine out of ten i'd have to say it was very exciting and unpredictable come the end as well yeah so I don't know whether, because I know you're hosting the party, I don't know whether we're going to have any driver interviews, I don't know whether you had that planned or... Um, well... Well, I wasn't planning <laughs> to. Okay, well, it's just, you know, we, I, I probably should have asked you that before we started uh, the stream. Yeah, Alan, Alan told me about the interviews, but I believe he told me we're missing them for this round. Okay, well... Well, if we're not going to do driver interviews, then I guess that is, I guess that is everything. So I don't know whether you want anything to add. I don't know whether, since you won't be, I believe, as far as I know, in the commentary box um, next race. I don't know if there's anything you want to add, final thoughts on this race, you know? Well, I mean, it was pretty, it was an interesting experience to see this from the commentary side of things. I mean, I already raced here as a driver and I know it is a, pretty high pressure environment so as a commentator I it was a little bit more chilled out I have to say <laughs> yeah I, I, I can imagine I'm not a league racer in any sense but yeah I can imagine especially top tier AOR that's gonna be high pressure stuff but um yeah I believe that is everything so so yeah I, I never actually sign off the stream so I don't know quite what Alan normally says but um yeah I think that is everything so so I hope everyone watching I hope you did enjoy this stream this race a thoroughly enjoyable race as far as I'm concerned RBOS massive thanks being in the country box it was nice to actually have a former AOR driver to actually get that sort of driver perspective very interesting um, and yeah thanks for joining me yeah no problem <laughs> so yes we will see 
AOR will be returning, I believe, next week for the Singapore Grand Prix, I believe it will be. Singapore is now yeah, after yeah, Italy. Singapore is after it too. Yes, that's all. That that has the potential to be another carnage filled race. Street circuit, night track, a lot of laps, so there's a lot of potential yeah. for something to and go a wrong. Of, so. A lot of walls as well. I think drivers will be making quite a lot of mistakes there. We'll, we'll see well. a lot of lost front wings as well. <laughs> all right, well, I'm looking forward to it then. If if you as a former top tier AOR driver are saying there's going to be a lot of lost front wings, then that's going to be fun. So yes, um, next week, same time, 8 o'clock on the Apex Online Racing channel. Be sure to join me, and I believe it will be Alan again, Alan Cavanaro joining me. And yes, um, I think that's everything, so I'll see you, I'll see everyone watching, I'll see you next time, next week, 8 o'clock.